Hi there, I'm Andrew Brown. Welcome to Real Time Music and Sound with Pure Data. In this episode, we're going to be looking at granular synthesis. In granular synthesis, um, we take an audio file, um, break it into very small parts, and then reassemble it, sometimes in order, sometimes out of order, um, whatever we like. This is a diagram done by Barry Truax, one of the founders of uh, composing with granular synthesis process. Um, it shows that an audio file can basically be broken into grains by adding an amplitude envelope over a section. And then the bottom part shows that you can have multiple streams of these grains um, that all um, got reassembled and overlap in various ways to, to produce all sorts of effects. In the last few videos in this series, we've looked at um, managing audio files, uh, including reading them in and playing them back. So in order to get started um, on our granular synthesis uh, journey, I'm going to uh, start with some of the um, patch, patch sections that we used in the last few videos. Um, this one simply opens um, an audio file and puts the data into this array called grain data. So if we read that file, I've got um, a piano a performance here from uh, Freesound uh, for use in this particular demonstration. The sound file outputs the number of samples um, that were in this audio file. In order to play it back, um, I'll just grab a section also from recent videos. Um, we use the tab read 4 object to read from the grain data. Um, we tell at the start, end, time, and the rate of playback. So let's add um, some values for that. Um, the first one we're going to use is the number for the start time, and that can be a little bit arbitrary. We're going to need to use it a couple of um, times, so I'm going to trigger, use a trigger object, um, have a value of it coming out here, Let's just put a number box. This will represent the start time. The end time will be the start time plus the duration. So we can use a plus object to add to the start time in order to calculate the end time. So what's going to be added to that? Well, it's going to be related to the duration. If I have another um, box here, let's just make sure we recall that this is going to be the duration. Um, let's give it a reasonable range. Um, the duration is in um, going to be in milliseconds, um, but of course our sample position needs to be in samples, and so we need to do um, a multiplication by a value related to our sample rate, um, in this case 44.1k, um, to calculate the end time. So the end time is the start time plus the duration in samples. And then the last thing that we need is the duration itself. Go straight through without that. Um, but another variable that we often use in sample playback um, is our speed of playback. So here we might have a speed that goes um, from something very slow up to something a bit faster. So we'll use that speed uh, with our duration. So in order to compensate for that, we need to divide the, sp the duration by the speed um, with a default value of 1. We'll go there. And in fact, when we update this duration, we need to re-trigger that calculation. So let me use a trig, trig with a bang to recalculate and the value will go into the um, right inlet. So that means when we update this speed value, we'll recalculate this value. All right, so if our duration is something like that, then if we turn our volume up. Okay, so we're getting very short playback sounds. We can make our duration even shorter. So if I just trigger a single number rather than scrolling, 
in here that that's the case. If I move to another location or move even further in, so there we are in another location, and we've got a very short grain of sound. Okay, so that's all working. Um, what we need to do for granular synthesis is to be able to create multiple grains um, in a sort of a cloud of grains. So this um, process here creates one grain, um, so we're going to use that um, to create an abstraction for our grain and then, sorry, grab that and then we'll use the clone object to make multiple instances of it. So here is that again as an abstraction. I'm going to use um, the inlet to specify the start time. The duration and speed um, I will send messages for those to this object. So we'll call one the grain duration. That will be a message that will be passed there and then we'll get will receive the grain speed. Oops. Spell speed. And that will go in there and we'll need to provide an audio outlet. Like so. Uh, so there's our grain. We need to save that um, into the same folder as our main patch. All right, so it means all of that is now um, not so much required. Although actually what we might do is copy that back out. So we've got a master volume over here and instead of just a single volume in our grain, we'll add instead of that um, an amplitude envelope for our grain so that it doesn't just go on and off. So we'll use a V-line to create uh, that amplitude envelope. That will go to our amplitude and that will need a message. Um, so we're going to go immediately to maximum volume, take a very short time, 20 milliseconds to do that. Then we're going to go to zero with a 20 second ramp down and the duration of that will be around about equal to our grain duration. Um, not entirely equal to the grain duration, so we'll uh, need to create a number which is just 20 milliseconds short of our grain duration. And the grain duration, of course, um, comes in here after it's multiplied by the speed. Uh, so that's all good. Then that will be passed out to the line as this argument here. Um, and we can bang that floating point number, which is storing that value um, whenever um, this uh, comes in, which will be whenever we are playing. There we go. All right, so it should be fine now. Let's resave our grain. All right, so we can now use that um, abst grain abstraction in our main patch. We want several of them, so we're going to use the clone object um, to create them. Let's maybe have 16 of them. So that's all great. And that will go out to our volume like so. Um, and remember we were passing values like we could pass a number in. Let's just reset this up. This is going to be our start time. Just to remind us. And we were passing in a couple of different arguments. Um, so we can create one and that's going to be sent to the grain duration value. Um, we can grab another one and that will be sent as the grain speed value. 
Um, so our grain duration, for example, we can turn that up and then our start point be here, turn our volume up. Uh, okay, no sound from that. Oh, I see why. What we need to do is to tell it that we need to use the um, next grain instance in the clone object. Um, okay, so it needs to be message box. All right, that's more like it. Okay, so that's all working now. We're playing our grains and we can play multiple grains and we can set their duration from outside. So now it's a matter of working out um, where we want in our, in our grain data file um, for our start point to be. Um, we could obviously just randomly jump around, but one thing which is useful to do is to be able to play through in a reasonably um, linear manner. In order to do that, we're going to use a phaser to go through, um, create a ramp that goes through our grain data from beginning to end and then sort of loops around again. Um, the phaser just goes from zero to one, so it's going to be necessary to multiply the output of the phaser by the length of the grain data so that it goes not just from zero to one, um, but goes all the way from zero to the end. And there's our size there, so that can be um, made to happen there. We... The next thing to do is to take a snapshot from that. So use the snapshot tilde um, that will grab the instantaneous value of that particular signal at that time. Um, the snapshot will be triggered by a bang and I'm going to use um, a metronome to do that. I'll give it a default time of 100. Um, actually you don't need a bang. That metro puts out a bang um, which is going to Go to the snapshot, we can use a toggle to turn it on and off. Okay, so far so good. The question, one of the other questions though is, um, oh sorry, that snapshot value is going to go in there. Um, the next thing we need to do is, well, how, what's the speed of this phaser? What is its um, frequency? Um, in order to play back at about the normal rate, we need to take the length of the file and divide it by the sample rate. So let's put um, an expression box in to do that. Um, so that will be 44,100 is my sample rate, uh, divided by whatever uh, number comes in the first inlet, which in this case will be the length of the file. Like so, and I think we might be ready to play back. Let's see, we've got our grain duration there. Let's just re-trigger that so all those calculations happen. Okay, so that sounds pretty close to the normal sounding grain file, but if we turn the grain duration down, You'll see here that we're getting lots and lots of spaces, juttery kind of thing, because our grains are smaller than the time between grains being initiated. But when we go like above 100 milliseconds, then we're getting overlap between our grains, um, and that sounds much more normal. Um, another thing we can do then is to adjust our grain speed. When we do adjust the grain speed, then we're going to get a drop in pitch or an increase in pitch. But interestingly, because we're doing this regranulation, um, we the, the speed of the music won't change, only the speed of the, each individual grain. one. 
you might hear that um, it's not a fantastic pitch shift, but nevertheless, it's not too bad. We can increase um, that a little, make that a little bit better by putting some jitter into the thing. Let's just say uh, 200 milliseconds. So basically every time um, we send a bang out from the Metro, um, let's just make sure we do this in order, we'll bang the random number to generate um, a little bit of jitter and we'll add that to whatever the value from the snapshot was. Um, and then of course we need to bang the snapshot as well. Um, and this will just slightly improve the um, pitch shift with a little bit of jitter. And if we want to get much more extreme, we can instead change the number which we're passing to random. So maybe in, instead of 200, we might go 200,000 or uh, some quite large number like that, which basically means that it's going to jump all over this um, grain file for the start point, grain by grain. Of course, again, we can adjust our grain size. Make them overlap a lot more. Make them overlap even more. So we get these big clusters of piano sounds. All right, so this is just an introduction to granular synthesis. Um, you can see that we can play with many parameters to get all sorts of interesting sounds. Um, you can also do this to a live input rather than a file as an input. So I'll leave that as an exercise for you. See you later.